Welcome to ShipFace Brewing Company's marketing plan presentation. ShipFace plans on introducing a unique and interesting line of craft beers based on a nautical theme. The brand seeks to form a solid reputation of delivering deliciously wicked brews and supporting Michigan communities in sustainable water practices and providing educational opportunities. What is craft brewing? Traditionally, it starts with small brewers that have a historical style, a unique twist on flavors, and they also employ unique approaches to connecting with their customers. Most Americans live within 10 miles of a craft brewery. Here in Michigan, we have two long-standing craft brewers that have gained national distribution. One would be Bell's in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and another would be Founders in Grand Rapids, Michigan. We have five high-level marketing objectives for ShipFaced. First, we'd like to have our product available in stores by the end of 2022. We're very fortunate to have a regional supermarket chain, Meyer, that is very supportive of craft brewers. We will also be building on our nautical theme by introducing unique labeling and creative beverage names that we will go into later in our presentation. We are fortunate to be launching our brand in a state that has a large variety of craft beer festivals, and we will plan to attend at least five of these festivals by the end of 2022. Our next two objectives are focused on sales metrics. Initially, we'd like to increase our sales by 15% by the end of year two, and continue our growth by 2 to 3% each year after. Finally, we recognize social media can be a critical success to any business. Our goal is to have 65% of our followers interact with our post by the end of 2022. Now let's pivot and take a look at our Pest C analysis. We will start with our political and legal environment. Breweries must take into consideration federal and state level requirements. The FDA has jurisdictions over breweries to ensure we are producing a product that is safe for the consumers. The TTB is responsible for collecting taxes from alcohol sales, and the federal government has actually enacted two acts, the Beer Act and the Congressional Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, that reduced the number of taxes that are leveraged against small brewers. From a state perspective, all brewers are required to register with the Michigan Liquor Control Commission Within Michigan, the legal drinking age is 21, but you only need to be 18 to sell or serve alcoholic beverages. Now looking at the economic environment, alcohol sales are big business for the US, accounting for 1.6% of the GDP. Additionally, it produces 2 million jobs, outputting over 1.2 billion in wages and 55.2 billion in additional tax revenue. During the COVID-19 pandemic, there were some obstacles to economic growth due to the country's shutdown. But as we continue to pivot out of the shutdown environment, the numbers continue to rise. At a state level, alcohol sales contributed to $9.9 billion to the state's economy, $3 billion in total wages, and $1.6 billion paid in taxes for these employees. There's approximately 396 breweries in operation, and our Generation Z segment consumes 3.3 gallons, having an economic impact per capita of $245.93. Michigan ranks 10th as the most populated state in the United States, with a population growth projected of 7.6% from 2000 to 2030. Michigan has a pretty even distribution of male to female population, and the overall population is dominated with 78.41% of whites. To help address social issues, Michigan does regulate the time in which alcohol beverages may be sold. They may not be sold prior to noon on Sundays, and they are restricted from being sold between 2 a.m. and 7 a.m., Monday through Saturday. 
Technology continues to revolutionize the craft beer industry like it has for other industries. Technology and automation is used at the start from planting and harvesting barley all the way through the production process to the final distribution of the product. Brewers can now track their shipments with GPS monitoring from the time it leaves the warehouse to the time it arrives at the retail location. Microbrewers have also developed their own service offerings for consumers, like Digital Pour, which is a digital readout letting consumers know inventory levels and where they are able to find certain products. We will touch on social media in an upcoming slide. Finally, we'll take a look at competition. Currently, there are 350 breweries throughout the state of Michigan. There are over 8,764 craft brewers nationwide, and then you have the large national brewers to compete with, like Anheuser-Busch. Technology and social media is a key to any modern business. It's even one of our overall objectives that we stated earlier in the presentation. We've already established our company website at ship-face.net. We have a Twitter page, a Facebook page, and an Instagram account. All of these digital social media properties will be included in our advertising and on our products. As we started to think of segmentations, we started to look at regions across the U.S. markets and quickly focused on our home region of the Midwest. We're now going to transition from the macro level and start drilling in on more of a micro level. And we're going to focus on the state of Michigan, which has a low barrier to entry. And also, if you produce less than a thousand barrels or less, you're able to self-distribute. We already touched on Michigan as the 10th most populated state in the union. And it also has a population that's already very familiar with craft brews, ranking fifth in the country. As we continue to focus in at the micro level, we selected Traverse City, Michigan. Why Traverse City? It's a four seasons town. There's events going on year round. There's sporting events, there's concerts, there's also craft beer events specific to Traverse City. Also, there's a robust retail community that gives us lots of opportunities to resell our products in bars and restaurants. As we look at targeting, we first started looking at the experience level of beer drinkers. The reality is, at any level, they could be a consumer of our product, and we'd love to have them try our product. But we think the experience and veteran is more likely to be our target market, primarily because they experiment more, they've tried more products, and they might be more open to trying something new. Next, if we look at the educational level, once again, it could be any educational level. But when we think about our experience along with the age group we're targeting, we really feel the bachelor's degree is our sweet spot. Finally, is our age group, which is the millennial population. It's the age groups between 25 and 40. They're tech savvy. They have lots of disposable income. And really, it's a mix. It could be male or females who are trying the product. Ship face marketing position is going to be a little bit different than some of our competitors. First of all, we are focusing on our recipes and we're gonna contract the brewing out to a third party. This will free up our company's time to focus on distribution and marketing of the product. Locally, in the Traverse City market though, we did identify three main competitors. Each one of these competitors not only brews a product, they have a restaurant and storefront to sell their product. In addition to their own products, they also resell competitors' products. First, we looked at Mackinac Brewing Company. It is the largest in the area and has a very well-known craft beer list and was established back in 1997. Second, we looked at Workshop Brewing Company. 
It has a great location in Traverse City and is well known for their food and the beers they produce. Third, we looked at Middle Coast Brewing Company. They have strong customer service. They're well known for their food and atmosphere. All three are well established in Traverse City, as we mentioned before, and would make great opportunities as places to resell our product. Before we jump too much into our marketing mix, let's step back and look at our overall product. As we talked about, we wanted to develop a unique label, have unique branding, and develop some stories around our brand. Here we're featuring our stout, CV Dan Stout. He was one of the greatest pirates ever to be on the Great Lakes. Next, we're featuring Hazy John Rackham. We added a little color to this logo because that's representative of the history of Captain Jack. He was known for wearing colorful clothing. Jack was also known as a small time pirate from the 1700s and once was even known to make off with an entire boat. Finally, we have Walk the Plank IPA. It was not just a fictional term. Back in the 18th and 19th centuries, it was a form of impromptu execution. As you can see from all three of these logos and names, we tried to be creative, we tried to be engaging, we tried to provide a story and a unique experience for our customers. Now that we've touched on our three initial brands, let's talk about how we plan to promote and deliver these to the market. As we stated earlier, we're going to focus on our recipes and we're going to look at contracting the actual brewing of the product and focus on retail and distribution outlets. We're not going to open our own restaurant or retail location. Therefore, we're going to focus on partnering with companies like Mackinac Brewing Company. Therefore, we can get on their craft beer list. We can get featured at their restaurant. This also gives us access to their radio spots that they have within Traverse City, where they feature what's going on in the restaurants and new beers that are coming available. Second, as we touched on before, we're going to focus a lot on the beer festivals. We're going to get out of these beer festivals and we're going to promote our brand. We're going to try to take advantage of that word of mouth advertising and our social media, right? It's not simply sitting there handing out beers to customers. It's actually getting out and engaging with the community. Next, let's pivot to price. Price is always a concern when you release a product. Our wholesale price will be $6.56 per six pack with a projected retail markup of 35%. And our half barrel kegs will be wholesale priced at $187.50, giving plenty of room for markup to our retail outlets. As we take a look at our year one budget, let's expand on some ideas we have not drilled into as deeply on previous slides. We're going to take our initial $20,000 investment that we had and focus on the startup aspects of the business. We're going to go out and try to recruit five investors to raise a total of $300,000 of startup funding for Shipface Brewing Company. We're going to guarantee these investors a minimum 2% rate of return. As we start to do an analysis of our income statement, we can see our total revenues are $1,666,380. The majority of our revenue is from the distribution of our beer products. Next, we can take a look at our cost to get it sold, which is totaling $841,980, which our largest cost is the $900,000 to our contract brewing. Next, we'll pivot into our operating expenses, which total $231,980, which covers our salary and wages, insurance, regulatory expenses, supplies, most importantly, marketing, and research and development. Finally, we have our other income and expenses, which is totaling $74,013.80 with a projected 
year one net income of $157,966. Now let's take a look at specifically how we're going to spend that marketing budget, right? We projected a total of $417,000 for our marketing budget. And how are we going to leverage those dollars? We've touched on many of these items previously in this presentation. Like we talked about our beer festivals, right? We talked about social networking. We talked about branding or our logos. Well, there's some other things we need to help support that, right? We need presentations, swag, and contest giveaway prizes. Where's that gonna come into play? It could come into play at these festivals we're visiting. It could come into bars or restaurants where we're doing local promotions. Another thing that we talked about early on is the idea of giving back to the community, right? We have it tagged here as philanthropy. Well, what does that mean? That means it could be some of our alcohol awareness training that we're gonna work on. It could be through scholarships and grants. We want everyone to know that we are a socially responsible company and we do wanna give back to our local communities. As with any good marketing plan, we're gonna wrap this presentation up with how are we going to evaluate whether being successful or not. We attempted to tie some of our evaluations back to our key objectives. But one of the areas we're going to start with is more of a financial analysis, right? Looking at our customer acquisition cost, right? Traditionally, customer acquisition cost is total marketing plus sales expense divided by new customer. When we think of ship face brewing though, we're going to replace that new customer with volume of increased sales or products sold. Next, we're going to take a look at our social media platforms. We established an objective early on to have a 65% engagement with people on these platforms. We're not only going to monitor our platforms, we're going to also look at our competition's platforms. We're going to look at their posts, their likes, and their numbers of new followers to help us establish a baseline to see if we are doing what's consistent within our market. We will also take advantage of customer feedback surveys. When we're out at these beer festivals, we're going to get out there and talk to our customers. We're going to hear what they have to say about the brand. When we have or we're executing promotions at venues like bars and restaurants, once again, we're going to get out and talk to the customers. Truly try to evaluate how they feel about the brand, how we're positioned, do they like the taste and flavors of our products. We'll also do some surveying online where they can go to any one of our social media platforms and quickly get to a survey so that we can assess how customers are truly feeling about our products. We'll also take some time to survey our resellers, right, to see what their feedback is on our products. Next, we're going to leverage Google Analytics. This is really going to help give us some quantitative data. Google Analytics will pull data from our web properties so that we can truly see what type of consumers are coming to our website. What geographic region are they coming from? What age group are they coming from? Are we targeting the right consumers or not? And then finally, we'll look at competitor reaction. Are we doing something that competitors are adopting to? Does that show that what we're doing is very impactful? We'll also evaluate what our competitors are doing. Do we see them doing something in the market that's generating a lot of buzz? Should we emulate that? Or is there a potential to pivot on something they're doing? One thing that is consistent, though, across this plan is we need to be continuously evaluating our approaches to ensure we're adapting to a changing market. Thank you for taking time to listen to our presentation on Ship Face Brewing. For more details on our marketing plan, please read our paper, Hopping into the Craft Beer Scene of the Great Lakes State. Thank you again for your time and consideration.